Hi, it's Luke Bowman here. Welcome to my video lesson for today. I'm going to get myself a real job by Corey Wong. This is another track that I've had a lot of requests for and it is a lot of fun to play. Thankfully, not too difficult. So I think this is a song that everybody can learn and play along with. I've had a lot of fun with it and have even made the mistake of trying to do my own version of it with me singing, which is not good because I'm not a singer. But it'd be great if you would check it out via the link below and give you an idea of the arrangement that I have transcribed for this. Let's have a quick listen to it. As you'll see, I cut out the parts with me singing. If you really want to see that, please check out the full video. In the original song, the main chords are played by piano, so what I've done is transcribe that for guitar. I'm playing on acoustic, you can play it on electric, it sounds just as good. So I'll take you through the piano parts that I've transcribed, but also what Corey's playing on the original track. I think he's using a nylon string guitar, and there's various bits of accompaniment during the verses, and then the iconic theme that comes up throughout the song. I've also transcribed the solo. If you do enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. Make sure you click the bell to get notifications when I have new videos coming out so you don't miss them. There are also links below to my Facebook and Instagram pages. It'd be great to have you following me on there too. Also a link to the donation button. Okay, let's zoom in and we'll get started with the lesson. Okay, so for this track we're on the key of C major. Doesn't matter what kind of guitar you're playing on it. If you want to do it on acoustic it sounds cool. It also sounds good with a clean electric. I'm playing it without plectrum, so I'm doing a finger style. Or you can use a plectrum with some kind of hybrid picking. But you are going to be playing various different notes on different strings at different times. So it's good to be able to have that option to pluck with your fingers. Okay, I'm going to start with the piano part. So, I've tried to get this as close as possible to what the piano is playing on the original track. It's not always possible. Pianos have much wider range than we do on guitar. Um, but I think this is relatively close. So the intro sounds like this. Starting off the C major chord, here, but we're just playing D, G and B strings. So it's kind of a C chord with a G in the bass. So what the piano is doing is it's the bass note that is moving. And the top bit is staying the same. So you play all three to start with, and then just pluck the G and B strings. And then we have the sixth fret. like that and that happens a lot during the song. So these chords, C over G, it's kind of like a C augmented you could call it. So the fifth is sharpened, so you often call that an augmented chord, C augmented. I'm calling that A minor. It's got the A in the bass. And then back to the C augmented. come in. And then that pattern continues through the vocals, through the first verse. Play it around once and then we go to an F chord. Down here at the first fret, so your F major. Which is the fourth chord in C major. So we're going from one chord to the four chord. Again just playing D, G and B strings. And then up to G major. Essentially just going C, F, and G. So one, four, five. But it's interesting to listen to the voicings that the piano is kind of playing. So we're not playing the straight chord, we're playing different things in the bass. And just playing the triad there. Then we go to A minor. So the minor sixth in the G chord. Again, still on those strings, D, G, and B. Seven. So this is the dominant second in C major. Usually we've got a D minor, which we do in a minute. But 
sometimes cool. Corey does this quite a bit to throw us in the dominant seventh chord there. Which would often lead you back to G. But in this case, we've got an A minor, D7, to D minor, to F. So that D minor, think of a D minor chord here. We're playing it all except the D strings. So the bass note, the D, and then the top three strings. here, F major, which is your C major, moved up, just the bottom three notes of it though, so your A string, D string and G strings, again just a nice little voicing of it. So that part, A minor, D7, D minor, F, and back to the C major of the G. So again, it's that F chord that we just looked at. But we're playing the D, G, and B strings. So it's an F major over an A, the third. And then we go to this chord. Back to the C major. So this chord here, we could look at that as an F minor, same shape as an F minor. But I think as we go through the song, you'll hear it with a G in the bass. I would call this a G13 with a flat nine. So the flat 9 in G, the ninth note would be an A, you're flattening it to an A flat. Later on we voice it down here. In terms of playing it, just think of your minor chord on those top four strings. That's the easiest way to play it. So then for verse 2, that piano part pretty much stays the same, except for when we get to the D minor. when we get to the F. In my transcription that is in bar 18, you have the D minor twice and then the F twice as we were playing it but then we're adding the top half as well. Just to fill it out a bit and then we do the C. In bar 19 we go from the C to this here which is 3rd fret, 2nd fret, 3rd fret on your D, G and B. Now I'm thinking of this as a G9 chord. So it's your D dominant 7. But you're adding this A. So it's a 9, G9. 2. This is all if we were playing the bass in the G. G11 chord to that G13 flat 9. So it's quite simple to play, and it sounds quite simple. But it sounds really good, it's that kind of matching the melody going down. So during that second verse, the guitar actually comes in quite quietly on the track. So it's mostly piano, but there is that nylon string coming through. So for a lot of this part, when we get to the main riff and the solo, you can hear the guitar quite clearly. In some of the other parts, it's quite low in the mix. It's getting hidden by certain things in the mix. So I've tried to pull out what I think is being played, where I'm not exactly sure, I can't quite hear it. I may have put a few of my own notes in there so that it makes some kind of sense. But just so you know what I think is being played, so verse, verse one, nothing. It's just the piano and the vocals. Verse two, what he's doing on the guitar. He's just pulling out the bottom of those. So 5th fret on your D, up to the 6th, up to the 7th, and then down to the 7th on your A string. And 5th down to the 3rd. And then kind of mirroring that G major chord, which the piano is also playing. And then for the A minor, I think it just double stops again, so the 5th fret on your G and B. playing the D7 and the other part but here we're just going and then we go D minor again we're just picking out the two notes down to the F and then so 
So kind of that second verse, it's just a very basic, simple accompaniment that's just adding some nice notes to what's already been played on the piano and the vocals. It's a lovely little accompaniment, which you can learn. And it's just a good example if you're playing along with a keyboard player or another instrument, you don't necessarily want to play exactly what they're doing. So Corey here is just picking out certain notes of the chords that are being played and kind of highlighting them. It sounds really good. Okay, then we're going to, I guess what I'm calling the bridge section. So if we jump back to the piano part for that. So for this part, if we just look at the chords first, we're going G minor seven to a C seven to an F major seven to a B flat seven and back to the C, back to the F over the C and then back to that G 13 flat nine chord. So for this part, we're kind of mo almost modulating to F major. So G minor seven, which would be the two chord, to the dominant five chord, the C seven, back to the one chord, and then we move into the B seven, bringing us back to the C. So the way we're playing this, so G minor seven, so you borrow across at your third fret, so playing the bottom note and then the D, G, and B. Again, this is the piano part that we transcribed for guitar. the G minor seven. Grab that seventh in there. So two kind of variations of the same chord. To the C major seven. And then a little melody. So fifth fret on your G to third fret on your B string, then to this F major seven. So F major here. Very often with F major seven. Basically you're adding an E to the chord, into the F chord. You can do it at the top here. Take off your first finger. Or add the E down here. So this is a very common, especially in jazz. Jazz comping, this is kind of a common major seven shape. So it's a good one to know. So I've got my first fret on the bottom string. Nothing on the A. Second on the D and G. And then first fret on your B string. So it is just an F major chord. With that F drop to E. Lovely sounding chord, and then we're adding the top to it. To a B flat dominant seven there. At the first fret. Then back to the chords that keep coming through. C. F over C. So it's pretty much your F chord here. But you're playing the C. But the bottom note is the third fret here. C. And then that. G13 flat 9. Back to your C. Or you could play the C here if you wanted to, if that's easier. Some of these chords are quite hard to get to quickly. So this part here where it goes from C7 is not easy to get to. So miss out that little melody if you want. Just go C7. So again, the nylon string at this point is just picking out certain parts of the chords for this bridge. The G minor seven to the C seven. And then exactly the same for the F. And then it's playing the C chord. As we did earlier. So the C. Again, these are just inversions of the various chords that you already know. So when you see that, what is that? It's just the C major. I'm just taking the middle three strings. Okay, and then we get to the main riff, which is probably the bit everybody's waiting for, which goes. Again, I'm plucking this. Play it with a pick if you want. Give it a bit more attack. But what we're doing here is double stops within C major. So it's very similar to what we looked at when we did the Optimist, if you've seen that video, a lot of the licks in there, kind of C major. We're doing the same here. So we start off, eighth fret, top two strings, then nine, eight on your G and B, to the 10th fret, and then back 
back to the 9898. Fifth fret to your seventh fret and your sixth fret. Still on your G and B strings. Fifth fret again on your G and B. And slide up fifth to the seventh fret on your D and G strings. Back to the fifth fret. So slowly. Like that. Again, just have a listen to the rhythm. It's kind of a repeating pattern that's going on with the rhythm and the notes once you get used to it. Quite clipped. So it's not letting them ring through. Keep it nice and clipped. So that first one you hold on, and the second note clips. So that first one is like a dotted eighth note then the 16th note and then a rest. Okay, and that's that riff. Keeps coming through throughout the song. What I've also put in the transcription for the first guitar, which is the piano part, it's kind of like a little keyboard line that goes through in the C major scale. So if you want to learn that, you can do. We then go into third verse. Piano part pretty much stays the same. Have a look at the tablature, there's a few small changes, but the nylon string gets a lot more interesting and in starting to pick some things out and you can hear it a bit more on the track as well. So let's have a look at that. So those chords we've already looked at. But we're just picking it out. second finger off the 6th fret, down to your 5th fret, and then we're moving up to a G chord here, but we're just playing like that. What I would say is let all these notes ring through, so it's not, let them all keep ringing. Then we move to an A minor chord, so we're playing it down here, now playing it up here. D minor shape, up here, bar in your 7th fret. Just picking it out, so pluck the chord, and to your 7th fret, to D major, D, G and B strings. And then we drop it to D minor. F. So again, he's just playing triads here. So D minor, D minor, to F. So you're not changing chord here, it's still the D minor, you're just playing a different part of it. To the F, and then you add the little line. So again, it's picking out that F major chord. Then put the 8th fret on your B string. And then into the second bridge, picking it out again. It's the G minor 7, literally picking out the, the chord. C, C dominant 7. Quite a few of these chords, Corey's not just plucking them, he's giving them a almost a strumming effect. It's that bar there, we're doing the F, ma F major 7. So just from that shape, just the top half. B flat 7 again. To a C. Yeah, 
again just picking out the notes and arpeggiating it, the chords. <laughs> relatively simple but it's very effective how it sounds alongside the rest of the instrumentation. And then we go back to this. This time in the guitar one part, so the piano part, I've added that little lick which the piano is playing. Similar to what the piano is playing at that point on the keyboard. So again another little C major double stop lick. And at this point we go up the guitar solo. So the guitar part doing the piano stays the same, playing the same chords as the, the verse and the bridge. And the nylon string now is picking out the, kind of the melody, which Corey had been singing, he's now kind of playing it on the guitar. It's fairly simple, but it's getting that rhythm right. Give it a bit of vibrato, make it kind of sing, make it sound as vocal-like as possible. So put a few slides in. Hammer-ons and slides. So it's all being played around C major scale. All around here between your fifth and your eighth frets. You can see we go to the F there when as the chord changes, changes to the F. Up to the D there. Up the G. So have a think about some of these notes that have been played in the solo, the melody, how it works over the chords. It's so that first part all over C. Kind of highlighting the C major notes. And then we're throwing the F in. When we move to the F chord. Ending up on the D, which is the fifth of the G major. E, a minor next, moving up to that E, which is the fifth of the A minor. D7, so the D and the dominant seventh are playing there together. D minor, so we're going back to the F, which is the minor third in D. And then finishing off. Have a look at those notes and how they relate to the chords that we're playing or the piano is playing underneath. It's quite interesting to look at that, get an idea of the harmonies that are being used. Okay, go straight out of the solo into the final bridge section, which does have a slight change to it. So piano-wise, starts off with the same piano part, like that. But then there's kind of a build-up with the vocals as he's doing the whole get out of bed, don't read the comment thread bit. So we're going. Starts off with that C over a G, over the G in the bass, moving to the F, over a G, over a G11, down to the F, and then this is the different part where we go like that. So moving down to a C over an E, so C chord, got your G, which is part of the G's. Part of the C chord in there on the top, with an E in the bottom, so the major third in the bottom. And we're going to an F. Top two notes stay the same. So an F9 chord, or an F sus2, you're adding the G to the F chord. And then up to a D sus4, that chord with the F sharp in the bass, again the major third in the bass. And then back to the C over a G to the F over a G. So that part there. And then the piano bit dies out and we finish off with a, a little lick on the nylon string. So let's jump back to the nylon string and see what that is playing during this final bridge. So again, picking out some notes. It starts off with the G minor 7 to the C7, and then we move up to 8th fret, 9th fret, 8th fret, 
This is all on your DG and B strings, so C, C7 up here. And then F major 7. flat 7. So F major 7 up here, that chord, F major, F major 7, so we're playing the D, G and B, and then the top three strings, and then to the B flat 7 here, again just the top four strings. That part all together slowly. Really little cool chord melody, I guess you would call it. It's quite hard to play it at speed, so it needs a bit of practice to get those fingers going, but it sounds really good. And then we're going to go C, and the 6th fret, and like a C sus 4. So that's that run up, which we were doing there. Down here, playing here, is the C major to the F. on your D, G and B strings. So think of your C major, just on those three strings, to the F major, to the D major. And then we finish off kind of playing the melody in sixths. So this is all on your D and B strings, intervals of a sixth. So we're starting off on the fifth fret, slide in. Second and the first frets, to the third fret, fifth, third. Finishing on your second and first. So it's basically part of your C major. C major. So we've seen Corey do this before as well, kind of picking out a melody but playing it in sixths. Often does it in thirds as well. Sounds pretty cool. Final playthrough of the, and then we slow it right back down. Everything else drops out. That's just the piano and guitar at this point. So if we look at what the nylon strings playing. Very familiar. We've just slowed it down. We're playing it now in half notes instead of quarter notes, and then. So C major, F major, top half of a G major chord. And then we pick out the last bit, A minor. D7. I like that bit, so that's the F major 7. So we're starting off, kind of pluck up quickly. I'm sure there's a technical word for that. The F major chord. Straight to the open E, walking back down. Matches what he's singing, so it sounds really good. And then we finish C over G, F over G. And that's it. So the piano part's pretty much the same, just looking at the chords. Doesn't do all the picking, it's just doing the basic chords. And ending up with it. As we did at the beginning. And that's the song. I'm guessing a lot of people just want to be able to play. Because it is just such a cool, funky, happy kind of sounding rhythm part. So I hope you can tackle that, but also have a look at the rest of the song. There's some cool chords in there, some cool accompaniments uh, that you can learn from as well. Why not have a go at singing it? Like I did get them posted online and let's have a look. So stay tuned if you want to watch the Guitar Pro playthrough, if you want to see how the tablature is being played. Okay, thank you for watching and we'll see you soon.